Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. So today I'm gonna continue on the video that I did last week on logic gates. And this time I'm gonna show this little practical example of how you can use those logic gates. So I have this patch here and what it does is that you have these effect modules and you also have this sub module and you can toggle those on or off. So we have the signal path always going through the ones that we have selected. So kind of choose different configurations on which ones are turned on and which ones are turned off. So I'm just gonna demonstrate what it sounds like. It just, it just has like a citrus that outputs a triangle wave. So right now, no effect is enabled. Just a basic triangle. So let's turn stereo on or delay or reverb or all of them. I think you got the point. And it also has this additional feature that if the sub is on, the stereo module will always turn off. The usefulness of that is debatable. <laughs> yeah, like this is this is just sort of an example patch. I don't I don't think that this is like a an actual patch that somebody would use necessarily. Okay, enough rambling and let's go to the map side. So here I have a couple of logic gates that we looked into in the last part. I'm gonna put a link to that somewhere if you haven't seen it yet. So first I'm just gonna describe how the signal behaves, like what's going on with these on off things here. So first we have the citrus and from the citrus, it kind of splits into two possible paths. And here you can see we have these plugins, the stereo shaper and a delay and a reverb. And with each of these plugins, they sort of have two gates on or off. And these gates are just instances of fruity mute, which is a, a plugin where you can essentially just toggle a signal on or off. So when I move this knob, whenever it's over 50%, it'll be on. And if it's less, it'll be off. So yeah, each one of these has like an on path and an off path. So here, if we would have nothing enabled, the sub is a separate part, by the way, I'm gonna, I'm gonna explain it soon, but let's just focus on the effects. So now we have nothing on, here in the stereo on gate, we can see that it's off. So nothing is going through. It's not going to the stereo plugin. But here on the stereo off, we can see that this is actually on. So the signal is gonna go right through. And then the next section or block, I guess, is the delay. So here we have the delay on, which is off because the delay is not turned off. So all of these that say on are always connected to the toggle switches. So the stereo switch is connected to the, like the mute knob of this one and the delay switch is connected to this one and so on. But then the off counterparts are connected to knock gates. So they're basically just inverted so that whenever this is turned on, this gate turns off. So the way that you wanna think about this is that we're kind of creating all the possible paths that the signal could travel through, like all the possible combinations, like just delay on, maybe just reverb and stereo, but not delay and so on. And then when we switch these on, these gates will sort of let the signal flow where it needs to flow in order to kind of arrive at the correct output. Because what we don't want is duplicates of the signal so that it like goes through multiple ones at the same time. It only needs to take one route because then we'll get all sorts of problems like compounding volume and like mixing dry and wet together in a weird way that is not the point of this. <laughs> if we only had the top path, so we only had like a toggle for each of these plugins, then if I would turn stereo off, everything would be off from that point because the signal 
wouldn't have any alternative route to go through. And if I could just explain this a little further. So if we only had the stereo module enabled, we can see that here stereo on is on and stereo off is off. So here, when we go to the stereo plugin, it'll also take two paths. So it'll go to the delay on and it'll go to the delay off. So if the delay is on, it'll take this route and go right through the delay plugin. But if the delay is off, it'll take this route and go straight to the reverb. And same thing with the reverb, like if it's if it's on, it'll go here, and if it's off, it'll go here. And if you're coming in from the delay, it's also connected to both the reverb on and the reverb off. I hope that made sense. <laughs> It can be a little bit confusing since this configuration is kind of a uh, messy looking, but yeah, I mean, let's, let's just go over these gates then. Like what, like what are these, how are these gates making this behavior possible? I'm just going to start with the top part. So remember how I described whenever the sub is on, this toggle actually doesn't sort of work because the stereo will always be off if the sub is on. So here I have this not gate and an and gate and this not gate is connected to the sub. So remember how the not gate, like its purpose is to always inverse whatever is coming in. So whenever sub is on, this not gate will always output off, so zero. And then we kind of have this AND gate in series with it. And in here, this is connected to the output of the NOT gate and the stereo switch. And the AND gate works in a way that both of the inputs need to be true in order for the output to be true. So it's A times B. So now in this case, when we have the sub enabled, it's going into the knock gate and it's going to invert it. So this is going to output zero. We can notice that no matter what we do with this input, this is always going to output zero because anything times zero is going to be zero. So this, this sort of prevents the stereo path from toggling on. But what about the off path in this case? So for that one, I have this NAND gate down here. So this is essentially kind of the inverse of AND because it has the A times B and then one minus the front to kind of flip it the other way around. And now that I think of it, this could actually be just replaced with another knock gate. I'm just gonna try it. I'm just gonna take that off and then just connect this to the knock gate and then connect that to the stereo off and let's see if it works just the same. So yeah, that that NAND gate actually could just be replaced with a NOT gate. So yeah, I think that's about it for this explanation. <laughs> and again, this is just kind of an, an example of how you could use these gates and arguably there would be a little bit prettier way to create this kind of a setup. I might make yet another video about it a little bit later, but now you kind of know how you can use logic gates or how, like how you transform that into functionality in a patch. So yeah, like this video if you thought it was interesting and subscribe to my channel for more videos and I will see you in the next one.